Okay, everyone, let's uh, begin again with Section 2 from Chapter 24, and we're going to talk about business cycles. But before we do, let's make a, a quick um, detour and talk a little bit more about this concept of long run and short run. All right, because this really plays an important role in this chapter. In the long run, we're talking about economic growth. So uh, we're talking about economic growth. And in the short run, we're talking generally about business cycles. All right, now what makes long run long run? Long run is long enough such that supply is flexible. All right, in other words, we can produce as much as we can produce. All right, it's, it's long enough such that we can change um, the number of factories that we have, the number of people we've employed. All right, all our factors that we have are variable. All right, and in this case, output, all right, is a function of, well, our, um, our resources. and our technology. All right, so basically we take our resources, put it inside of our technology, and we get our output, and that's what determines output in the long run. In the short run, on the other hand, we have these business cycles, and output is actually the interaction of what we'll call aggregate supply and aggregate demand. All right, so the interactions of supply and demand for all the different markets in the economy actually determine what this output is. So in the long run, we're going to be at what's called potential output or this full employment level of output because we've had all the problems with yada with this stuff or that stuff all these things have worked themselves out because it's in the long run it's long enough such that all the economic maladies that we can have have a chance to fix themselves in the short run though we still have all the economic problems that creep up in an economy from time to time and that's why we've got these ebbs and flows around what we call our potential now in the long run all right i talked about this thing called potential all right, so think about it like you're running a marathon. All right, so you're a marathon runner. All right, here we go. Here's our runner. Look at him run. All right, and there's a speed that he can run to do the entire 26.2 miles. All right, now 26.2 miles is a long ways so you don't want to be running flat out because you can't do that so there's this pace alright we'll call that as potential that he can handle alright that's long run output that's how much you can produce over the long run sustainably but in the short run alright say over you know a hundred yards All right, our runner can run a lot faster. All right, so he might run 100 yards really fast. But if you're like me, after that 100 yards, which my really fast isn't all that fast, but he might have to run the next one slow. All right, so think of this as, you know, this is potential. This is your slow and steady pace. All right, I can do this the entire day and get this done, right? But in the short run, sometimes the economy can speed up. We have an expansion. Sometimes it slows down. Um, and this ebb and flow, this fast and slow, we call that the business cycle. All right. So let's go back to our presentation here for a second, and let's talk a little more about business cycles. So what I want to do is I want to show you a graph, a fairly long run graph. So we start back here in 1860 and go all the way up until into the early 2000s. 
And what we've done here is we've taken GDP, which would normally look like this, all right, and turned it on its side so that it looks like this. So what we did was we got rid of that long run growth pattern. Okay, what what's long run in there that that constant growth is constant going up. We got rid of that so that what we could see was the, you know this part. So what we can see is how it wiggles. Because this trend part of GDP, we kind of think of that as the long run. And the wiggle about it, we think of that as the short run or the business cycle. So let's take a look. All right, so what this has done is it's changed on its side, and what this is doing in percentage terms, how far away are we from potential? So when we're up here, we're highly above potential. So here it's about 15% above potential. And when we're down here, well, we're definitely below potential. So here you're about 15% below potential. So we can kind of look at this, and what's really neat is to put history historical points alongside this. You can see, first of all, we divide the series up into two basic periods. All right. And actually, we can go, that's not quite right. Let me do it like this. 1945, so right about here. All right. This is what we call pre war. This is what we call post-war, referring to World War II. All right, and we actually divide it even further between World War I and World War II. We call this the in this period right in here, the interwar period. But we're not going to worry about that too much. Just look at after World War II, before World War II, and you can see some interesting stuff. Um, one, you look at the swings in the business cycle they're really pretty wide up until the pre-war and then post-war they get a lot narrower well what's different well some major structural changes happened right around here in the economy as a result of the great depression All right, and these major structural changes things like FDIC insurance the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation which insures um, checkable deposits or banking accounts. Your checking account, um, there's insurance against bank failure there. There's um, unemployment benefits that we've added. There's um, a host of other things, safety nets that we've put in place. Plus, we've also had active business cycle management in terms of macroeconomic policy really beginning in earnest in this post-war period. All right. So one thing we see is that business cycles seem to be less. All right. That goes to this this idea called the great moderation. And this this graph really shows why we think maybe there was a great moderation because you see how much narrower these business cycles are. The peaks aren't as high, but the troughs aren't as low, and the troughs are smaller. Um, um, especially, I mean, we look at the Great Depression. We can look at we look at several different events here: one, two, three, four, five in that pre-war period where we had below 10% um, below um, potential. We're here, we never have that. In fact, we're very rarely outside of 5% below potential. Um, that's one thing we see. We can also see that these are fairly occurrent. They just go back and forth. It's just the economy wiggling. 